I postulate that every precious metals bull market is led by gold because the fear buyer predominates. Because they follow the herd rather than being the ones who should be buying right now when it's cheap, just like the central banks are doing. You know, the central banks have bought more gold and silver than any time in history. My experience tells me, irrespective of the gold-silver ratio, that silver doesn't move until the beginning of, until, pardon me, the middle of a bull market. I think as the price goes higher, it reinforces the mentality and the decision-making people had to go there in the first place. So they're going to double down. They're going to add more because, yeah, I was right. It's getting worse. It's scary. But a whole nother group of people will jump on board because they just are waking up to an alternative to a system that's in its dying breaths. And they never even looked around to find that there were other places to put their money. So in today's show, two financial experts, Andy Sheckman and Rick Rule, will talk about the gold and silver markets, and we'll do a deep dive into the human biases and behaviors that influence the price of the commodities. We'll show you the best clips of the latest interview of Andy and Rick, linking it up with the latest market news in gold and silver. If you want to understand how supply and demand work from a pragmatical way in gold and silver, this video is for you. Like, subscribe. Subscribe to the channel and share it if you want to support the channel. Let's get into the video. Precious metals markets are interesting in that they reverberate between both greed and fear. Uh, the two great uh, investment stimuli. Uh, I postulate that every precious metals bull market is led by gold because the fear buyer predominates. Uh, when the fear becomes extreme enough that you get price momentum, the greed buyer comes in. Uh, and ironically, the price move uh, that is caused by the greed buyer reinforces the narrative around the fear buyer, and the fear buyer increases his or her purchases. My experience tells me, irrespective of the gold-silver ratio, that silver doesn't move until the beginning of, until, pardon me, the middle of a bull market. I, I think you could say if all we ever do is just return to the mean or the average, you're looking at a five-fold increase. People are waking up, but I find us in the eye of the hurricane right now. And, you know, the people who have been buying silver, a lot of them understand what's happening and some bought it for the wrong reasons. And I, I think we'll end up talking about that today because I think they bought it to get wealthy. Silver is wealth and it's been wealth through you know, 5,000 years worth of history and, and world wars and hyperinflation, and Great Depression and everything the world's ever tossed at it. Um, but yeah, I do envision a period of time where, look, this whole school of investing, this wave theory, if you will, human emotions, mm -hmm. um, Elliott wave, Kondraty of wave, I think you will see a period of time, whether it be another banking crisis or another silver squeeze or whatever it is, that triggers an awakening, um, I think we'll see this number grow exponentially. I think we'll see the number of people who are interested in metals grow exponentially because most of the asset classes that, that, that people find themselves in traditionally right now have been distorted through a decade plus of suppressed interest rate and easy money. And the only asset classes that have had the opposite effect have been precious metals. And that is, in my mind, a much deeper discussion, one that centers around gold and silver really you know being the uh the antithesis of the system it's the emperor doesn't wear isn't wearing any clothing type of thing it's peeking behind the curtain and seeing the wizard of odds is just a frail old man so you have to hold down gold and silver they're not commodities what they are is is you know the the opposite of this fiat based system so look the bottom line is simply this is that people would buy twice as much because they don't like low premiums. Fine. I agree with that. Buy twice as much when the premiums start to rise. This is why people, so few people ever really succeed in investing too. Today, we explore the timeless principle of supply and demand, the cornerstone of economic theory. In a market where sellers and buyers converge, prices serve as the fulcrum, balancing the forces of supply, the quantity of a good or service available, and demand, the desire and ability of consumers to purchase it. As demand surges, propelled by factors like consumer preferences and economic growth, prices 
ascend, incentivizing producers to ramp up supply. Conversely, when demand wanes, prices retreat, signaling producers to scale back. This delicate dance between supply and demand shapes the contours of every market, from commodities to cryptocurrencies, dictating prices and driving economic outcomes. Now, we'll show you more clips of Andy and Rick Rule about how this economic concept applies to the reality of gold and silver in today's markets. Watch the video to the end to get the most out of it and hit the subscribe button to help us do more videos like this and raise the needed awareness to contribute to the awakening of the gold and silver community. Enjoy the video that the market needs to be led by gold when the narrative becomes broad based enough that the generalist money comes in the market and looks at the relative weakness of silver compared to gold the silver market absolutely takes off it moves much faster and much further but it doesn't move until the middle of the market we yeah. have said before on this show that the most volatile asset class of all are those few relatively high quality silver companies because there simply isn't enough market cap in that space to hold the generalist money when it comes into the market. If you'll permit me a couple of examples, in the 1970s, Coeur d'Alene, 10 cents to $65, not a typo, 10 cents to $65. Wow. In more recent times, the, the bull market in the early part of the 90s, uh, Pan American silver, 50 cents to $45. Silver standard, 72 cents to $44. You own these stocks not with money that you had set aside for a child's college education, but rather that money that you can afford to lose half of in anticipation of making 10 to 15 times your money. People yeah. who are listening to this discussion, please use money that you can afford to lose half of without it changing your decision as to what to have for breakfast. That comment doesn't apply to buying gold bullion or silver bullion. Buy that to sustain your lifestyle. Buy that because you're afraid. Buy that because it's actual wealth. Buy it because it's actual money. The very, very, very high quality producers buy those as investments. But the speculations that we're talking about, the 10 cents to $65, the 72 cents to $44, use money that you can afford to lose half of without it changing your decision as to what to have for breakfast. With regards to the oil stocks, only buy them if you drive or use energy. In other words, everyone should own them. Well, the herd rather than being the ones who should be buying right now when it's cheap, just like the central banks are doing. You know, the central banks have bought more gold and silver than any time in history. And so when you talk about, when you talk about, you know, this, this um, small group of people expanding as the price goes higher instead of doing it right now when they should, I believe that will happen. That's usually how it does. We, we added 14,000 clients in 45 days during Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank in March and April, which is unheard of. And that, that was because people woke up to a reality that they're not paying attention to. And the people who have been paying attention to it, um, yeah, you know, when the price goes down for a large portion of them, the counterintuitive nature it is a lot. It's a lot for them to handle. And, and a lot of people are, are hanging on by a thread, not quite capitulating. Some do. But um, I, I think as the price goes higher, it reinforces the mentality and the decision making people had to go there in the first place. So they're going to double down. They're going to add more because, yeah, I was right. It's getting worse. It's scary. But a whole nother group of people will jump on board because they just are waking up to an alternative to a system that's in its dying breaths and they never even looked around to find that there were other places to put their money. So I don't know if that's exactly the answer yeah. you're looking for, but I do believe that as the price goes higher instead of lower when everyone should be buying, that's how right. successful investors do business like Stanley Druckenmiller, who just went into to mining shares into physicals and sold AI. You know, these people are are sitting on the sidelines or doing other things. And when it becomes obvious that prices and momentum are moving in the other direction, that's typically when you would expect to see 
much greater uh, participation. And yeah, I think very quickly, it will overwhelm the physical market. It won't take but just returning to two and a half percent allocation to people's portfolios, which really is, that's half of what the traditional financial advisor would say, 5%, which I think is ridiculously low. But even a two and a half percent allocation would be a five-fold increase in demand in an industry that would not be able to handle that for more than a few days. And everything would just be blown up. What do you think of today's episode? Do you agree with the predictions of Rick Rule and Andy Schechtman? Is it possible to forecast supply and demand in gold and silver? Post in the comments section down below your insights on the video. Thanks for watching it to the end. Subscribe if you have not yet done so and check this upcoming video because you'll love it. I see you on the other side.